right. We officially live? Wonderful. Welcome everybody to the open studio hours. Uh, my name is Emmy Klein and I am the resident artist here at Jerry's Artorama. And uh, essentially what this is, it's just very low key, no plans of me doing specifically anything. It's just uh, I have my normal everyday job where I'm going to be working on stuff. And if you guys have questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. I'm going to be actually getting my chat here going in just a second once this reloads. And then um, you guys can absolutely feel free to ask me anything art related or, you know, say hello, tell me where you're from, all that jazz. And then I'm going to get started on, well, working. <laughs> all right, let's get my chat going. I think, I think I have it going. I hope, I hope that works. I think it's going. All right. So just to kind of fill you in on what I'm doing, um, I have these nine edge canvases and I need to update some artwork for them. So I've prepped them uh, with all of these adorable little stripies and now I'm going to paint a series of pastries on them because how adorable is that? Now I just got to figure out what pastry I'm going to paint or which one first really. Oh, this is why. Haha! -ha. Awesome! Alright. So now, I really love this cheesecake. I love that, like, that gooey, purpley. I want cheesecake. I think that's my problem. <laughs> or this tart with all the fruits. That's adorable. I mean, I'm definitely going to be painting quite a few of these. But... Um, oh, and uh, just for future reference, in case anybody's wondering, all these reference images either came from Pixabay or Unsplash. So they are royalty-free images, which are really great for artist resources to find images to paint, especially when you're looking for a variety of pastries. Plus, this also saves me from having to go out and buying pastries and eating them all. Although I'm not completely sure if I'm not going to do that anyway. Katie, what is our budget for pastries? <laughs> See, I like the idea of pumpkin pie, but like the colors in that are just sad. I don't think I like it. Like that's gorgeous. Nice. Ooh, Portugal. That's awesome. I think I'm gonna stick with this cheesecake. I like that. So I'm gonna get started on that. Um. Mm, it has, have, let me put all my other reference photos away. Nice. All right, need some colors. And of course I don't have any purple on my palette here. There we go, permanent violet. Definitely gonna need violet. Uh, and that nice, lovely crust brown, which would be good with raw sienna. Of course, this is not open. I have an X Acto blade down here to open it. I just you know I'm gonna get this everywhere. You know how it goes. That's okay. There it is. Ooh, and I actually happen to not get it everywhere. I'm impressed with myself there. There we go. Close this back up. <laughs> All right, raw sienna, burnt umber. I don't know if I want burnt umber just yet. Definitely need burnt sienna. Where's my burnt sienna? There is my burnt sienna. Pumpkin pie into rich dark chocolate. Ooh. Chocolate pie. Definitely a good option. And chocolate pie usually has a really lovely, um, oh, what are the colors? Like a nice 
like burnt sienna and the reds and that, that kind of like warm brown that really makes it look delicious. So. Chocolate chest pie is one of my favorite pies ever. So again, what is our budget for pastries? Can we get these in so I can paint them from life? Is that an option? Listen, everyone, if you want to send me pastries, I'll paint them for you. <laughs> All right, so we need some titanium white. I'm gonna keep it over here in my corner so I can keep it nice and clean. I'm definitely gonna need some blues just to kind of change the color up a little bit. And carmine. That carmine red will be perfect for the, that like lovely goo that kind of drips down right there. That'd be nice. A nice purpley red. But let me sketch this out real quick. Um, let me use the eight round. All right, so I'm gonna use the Black Swan short handle brushes. They come in the set like this. Um, I have it actually like popped up, but this does lay flat and close. Um, nice and compact, but I love the Black Swan. They're so soft and they have that like weird or not weird, um, that really nice springiness to the bristles. They're one of my favorites. So I think I'm going to, I kind of want to like sketch this out in this carmine color. So keep it nice and loose at first. that got a little bit too far over on the right hand side. This is why it's good to sketch before you commit to your drawing on the canvas. Plus I do have, um, mind you, this color that I mixed, I actually mixed it up and put it in a little extra palette. That way if I uh, mess up, I can touch up that background, which is a really fun way of saving that custom color that I made. So I want the end of the pie to be here, but I think it needs to go over a little bit more. There we go. I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow in there. I don't think I'm gonna use the, the plate. I don't think I'm gonna do that. Pops over that way. It's kind of shifting all that over just a little bit. Ah, Kathleen. Yes, the black swan brushes. They are lovely. And I'm a short handle brush kind of girl. Blame it on the uh, the show or the fact that I have, um, I guess, kind of all my art is usually like right in front of my face and usually on a table for you guys to see it. But like, I, I feel like I have way better control with a short handle brush. And if I want to get a little bit looser with it, I just hold my, you know, the brush at the end just to kind of give it a little bit less control. Although I do have a hair that is stuck on there. I have to trim that off. That happens every now and then with brushes. Where are my scissors? Uh, can you snag me some scissors? I would go grab it, but I might knock everything over. <laughs> I do have a single hair that is just a little long on my brush. Uh, top left. Yeah. Huzzah. Just gonna trim that one single hair so it doesn't get funky with me. There we go. All right, let's 
There's a little thing. Great thing about painting pie is that it doesn't have to be the perfect realistic drawing in order for it to look and make sense. Look like it, you know, is real. Let's get this gooey, this kind of pie filling on top. Alright. I always love the way that the like the berry pie filling kind of just bleeds into cheesecake. There's that drip. I'm gonna kind of exaggerate the drip. I'm gonna keep that base of carmine down. That looks lovely. Almost looks like I'm making cherry pie now. So remember guys, you can always ask me questions and that's anything art related, you know, doesn't have to be specifically about pie or uh, the acrylics that I'm using. <laughs> but feel free to pop any questions down. You should ask them questions too. That's true. But the question is like what? Oh, since it's almost October, how many people are gonna be participating in Inktober? Also, what are you gonna be for Halloween? Cause I am trying to figure out ideas of things to do costume related. I do have a couple ideas and I'm very excited about them, but it's gonna be fun. <laughs> Ah, when I toned the canvas for that Statue of Liberty painting, um, what I actually used was a combination of burnt sienna and alizarin crimson. So I got that burnt sienna, um, real warm, almost orangey kind of a color. Uh, it was very similar to, <sighs> there was that Lucas, the Lucas 1862 oils uh, they came out with their brand new colors, and it was very similar to the um, transparent red oxide. So it's it's got that transparency to it when you mix it with the spike oil, uh, but it has that real warmy kind of orangey red tone to it, which was I love starting off my paintings with really funky colors like that. What's the two paintings behind me? Uh, <laughs> I was telling this uh, story on the show last time. Uh, these were my last minute uh, addition to a art bar that I used to run. So art bar was a facility where you, it was, it was a bar and you could also go there and do art and uh, it's no longer open sadly, but um, we had these shelves that I was taking down from the front lobby and I could not find any spackle paste or anything to patch these holes with nor did I have the color of the, the wall color, so I couldn't repaint on top of it either. And so I decided to make two really gigantic paintings to cover up all the holes. <laughs> so I found the, um, I think it was kids paint. This is the Creative Inspirations kids paint uh, that I like had huge quantities of. And I just doused it in paint and smeared it with my hands and uh, all of the different colors really made it quite lovely, which was a lot of fun. But yeah, it was it was a quick. I can't uh, fix the holes in the wall, so here are some paintings. It's a good excuse to do uh, art, right? <laughs> Although uh, Katie has said that she, I'm not getting them back, 
she uh, she commandeered them, which I'm not mad about. I saved them. You did save them. I thought they were goners. I thought they were never to be seen again. So Katie did save them. Nice, Inktober for the second time, huh? Color seems to be opposite of the color wheels with blue grays. Finished statue. Ah, yes, Suzanne. Um, usually I do use opposites uh, in my paintings on purpose. So I did a painting of a cat that was a lot of like blue tones and well, it's, I guess I can, I can see it from here. Is it like blues and purples and Katie's gonna grab it here in just a second, I'll show you guys. Um, so I really do like using a lot of like really funky warm tones. Um, here it is. So this is the cat painting that I did and if you actually see in the skin tone, there's a lot of like cool uh, blue kind of gray tones to it. And if you actually look, that magenta just kind of sparkles through in some of the areas that I kind of left it uh, where you can see it through. And it's the same way with the um, the Statue of Liberty painting, which actually is over there if you wanna grab it. Yeah, Katie's gonna grab it for me. So that one, uh, that cat was a lot of fun. I started with a crazy magenta color, um, which was such a ton, it was a ton of fun. It was so much fun. Uh, actually, I think it was the Lucas Crew Liquid. Uh, I think this was the color that I started with, that crazy pink magenta. Uh, but yeah, here's the Statue of Liberty painting. So you can see um, that orange, it's that orangey color is still kind of popping through. And I love using the opposite of what the actual tone is. I mean, it's great to have that single color to kind of build up your layers like this, uh, to kind of find the form without having to worry about color temperature or uh, you know anything beyond just lights and darks. But to have that color kind of popping through with the greens, it looks quite fantastic. It, it makes me happy. <laughs> it gives it more energy, I mean. It does, yes. Very, very energetic. Let's see, having trouble with the steps of the process. Um, when you say the steps of the process, what exact, are you talking about just starting an oil painting or acrylic or just painting in general or what what's process specifically are we talking about because um i guess this is kind of similar in how i approached it before um well not exactly i'm not building up my colors with just a single tone i am starting to add different colors but if you can clarify on what process you're talking about so I can better answer your question, sorry. I wanna make sure I know what uh, you're talking about. And I'm gonna pop in more of this crusty brown color. Which I'm going to need to turn it down a little bit with some of this burnt sienna. Suzanne, yes, definitely incorporate that into your practice. It's a lot of fun to play with color like that. Um, and I wanna see your work. Definitely post it to uh, the Jerry's Live group. I believe I've seen your stuff on there before. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like I've seen it. I'm gonna need a little bit of purple just to give a bit of a shadow to my colors here. In general, um, an outline, but then the darks, add the highlights. Yeah, everyone does kind of approach art in a different kind of manner, but um, the way that I do it, like I'm not really doing a great job at showing you here, 
um, just because I'm not starting with the same color like I did for the cat or the um, the Statue of Liberty painting. Uh, and the, by the way, the cat is in acrylics, the Statue of Liberty is in oil. So I kind of approach them similarly, even though I'm using very different media. Um, what I did, like if I were to start this pie painting with just this one color, I look for my darkest darks and I try to lay down a lot of color. Like this is the darkest, I'm probably gonna be able to get that specific tone. But if I were to use a lighter wash or even maybe use some white in there with it, uh, I can get those highlights kind of back in. That way I'm finding my form with just one color and I'm not worrying about anything else. Um, so if you can start a painting very monochromatically only using one single color um, by using either more pigment to get your darkest darks or a lighter wash to get your highlights and stuff like that, um, that will help you find the form and then you can go back on top and start popping in your colors, if that makes sense. If you watch that um, the Statue of Liberty painting, there's a time lapse of it on our YouTube video. I or it in the ah, yes, I linked Katie linked it for me. Lovely. Uh, so if you watch that video, you will actually see exactly what I'm talking about. So I started the painting with just that burnt sienna mixed with alizarin crimson, and I I found all of my forms, and I did the the whole painting with just that one color, and then. Once I finished that and found all those, like the shadows and the highlights, I went back in with the green and started popping in all those funky colors. I hope that answers that question. Let me know if it didn't. <laughs> all right. moment yes oh I'm so glad I love when people have like those moments where like they they just get what I'm talking about <laughs> it's so satisfying that's what I love teaching that makes me so happy all right so now let me get this really nice dark reddish purple <laughs> nice. Feel free to send any cake my way. <laughs> Although I, you know, probably shouldn't eat cake. <laughs> my thighs and my hips do not need more cake in my life. Bless for me. I know. I think that's probably about as good as the crust needs to be for right now. Let's pop in some of those purples. Um, definitely don't want to cover all of that up because I want that red to just kind of shine through on some of that. Actually, while I'm painting pastries, what is everyone's favorite pastry? Because I have nine paintings to do. And I have quite a few references of cupcakes, and I have, um, Frida, I hope you're, you're listening. I have macarons, not macaroons. Uh, although I did try to find macaroon as well, the coconut kind of cookie. Um, there were not a whole lot of pictures of that, so I, that one might be one of those ones that I have to go get and take my own photograph or put it on the table and paint it before I eat it kind of a thing. Um, but yes, definitely you guys tell me what's your favorite dessert that you always just can't say no to or love to go eat because I need some ideas. And <laughs> this is gonna be a, a really fun 
painting series, but like just coming up with different ideas of different things like this. This is, I don't know if you guys struggle with that. I do. And I have to do art every day, all day, which is, you know, I'm blessed to be able to do so, but it's hard to just continuously come up with ideas. Ooh, lemon bars. Ooh, that's, those are good. Creme brulee, always, always good as well. I was thinking uh, tiramisu as well, cause, oof, I can get down on some tiramisu, let me tell you. <laughs> yep. So again, Katie, what is our pastry budget? I know, right? <laughs> Can anyone tell I'm that's hungry? That's kind of YouTube video. Dang it. I guess that's true. Donuts, lemon meringue pie, cookies and cream ice cream. Ooh. I love cookies and cream. That was, that was Katie, wasn't it? No, that's Amanda. <laughs> nice. Rainbow cookies. Ooh, yes, the little Italian ones. Ice cream. Ice cream does count, but I did do a painting of a strawberry ice cream cone recently, so I probably won't do ice cream just yet, maybe? I don't know. Cherries Jubilee, that sounds good. I mean, anything sweet, really, let me tell you. I got a wicked sweet tooth. My dentist could tell you that I really do. He's not happy about it, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, so I am trying to let this uh, carmine kind of shine through in little spots here and there. And if I don't put that, uh, this is the permanent violet that I'm using on top of it. If I don't put a ton of it down, it still kind of gets that like reddishy purple kind of going. Because I definitely want that to kind of shine through as that like the berry topping on top of my cheesecake. Oops, sorry, there's a glare going on there. But I think that drip needs to stay as carmine as possible. Because that, um, that gooey kind of uh, topping with all the berries and everything, uh, it gets really transparent and very red when it gets really thinned out, which is like right here at that drip. It's perfect. Oh, again, with the glare, sorry. That drip right there. So this is a lot darker than I'm gonna actually paint it, um, but I definitely want to, <laughs> how, did you miss, how did you miss the donut? Let's be honest. Um, but yeah, no, I definitely wanna add a little bit more pops of color in here than what I'm actually seeing. So I am going to pop that saturation up with the purples and everything, just to kind of give it a little bit more interest as far as what I'm looking to have on my, my painting here. It looks a little bit more interesting that way, you know? And there's a bit of a cherry here. Or, well, cherry, berry, blueberry. We'll say blueberry, maybe it's blueberry. That got real red at the top, so I'm gonna leave that there. There's only one pudding. Jam, roly-poly, and custard. Ian, I've never had that, but you know what? I'd eat it. <laughs> that sounds, it sounds amazing. <laughs> I do not discriminate when it comes to desserts. <laughs> well, any food, really. I'll eat anything. I'm a human garbage disposal, let's be honest. I eat all the things. <laughs> Especially desserts. <laughs> Now I gotta figure out what that, like, jam really, is that one of those things that like the rolls? Where it's like, it's got well, like, like the, cake roll, but yeah, where it's got the, um, the cake, the really thin cake. Sorry, I have a hair on my shoulder too that's driving me nuts. Uh, it, that sounds like it's like one of those cake things that like you put the jam and custard in and like roll it. I'm, I'm probably very wrong, but. Is that, oh, we have an image. Ooh, yeah, I'd eat that. <laughs> All right, let's see. Courtney, do you have any advice on how to create re raised tactile lines on paper or canvas? 
Um, I guess th there are quite a few ways to add raised lines to uh, your paper or your canvas. How raised are we talking here? That's my question to you is, um, is it just a, just a little bit or do you want it real, I guess, chunky? Because there are all kinds of mediums to really use um, to get kind of a three-dimensional surface texture. So let me know how much, because paper is a little bit different as well. Um, because you can do some a lot of things to canvas that might not survive on paper and vice versa. Are you guys over there looking up cakes and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to share it to our other things so everybody knows you're live. Ah, yes. I wouldn't be mad if you looked up cakes, though. We, we looked up the jelly roll. That's true. Not gonna lie. All right, so there's that. I need to get a little bit more of like a lavender situation going on here. And I should be using, <laughs> put it on your bucket list. Hot and cold combo, ooh, with the ice cream? That sounds amazing, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I don't know if I like that. I feel like that did not do what I wanted it to do. Let me see if I can pop this color down somewhere else where it makes sense. This lilac is not, not what I'm looking for. I mean, I kind of like it, but I'm on the fence. It's just like slightly dark. Whereas like these reflections of the berries and stuff, I think I'd probably do a little bit more of like a, this blue color. Moderately raised lines. Okay, to feel like the outline of a drawing. Uh, you can do a couple different things. On paper, you can actually score it from the back, which is really fun. Uh, so if you take uh, any kind of a tool that has, um, not like an exacto blade, because that would cut through it, but something uh, pottery tools are kind of coming to mind where you would actually be able to uh, kind of carve into your paper um, with uh, and just kind of indent it. You probably, yeah, like a nib would probably do really well. Um, and you might want something more soft underneath it while you're kind of scoring those lines. Uh, that would give you a little bit of a raised uh, kind of surface for your paper. Um, like it. it would, yeah, that would kind of emboss it uh, that way. Another way that you can do that is, especially if you're doing like the outline of a drawing, um, you can use, what's that lead, leading that's um, honestly more for like glass painting, but it's, I, I hate to say the word puffy paint, <laughs> it comes to mind, but it, it's kind of like puffy paint uh, where it comes in a tube and it has a really long, thin, uh, almost like a needle applicator, but it's not needle thin, uh, but you can cut it uh, to whichever like roundness of the nib that you want. And then you can apply it almost like you're drawing with it. And then once it dries, it doesn't restrict or contract and it keeps that raised surface. So when you're doing like glass painting, it should keep that fluid paint inside of those areas. But as, um, Somebody, I mean, you can use it on paper or on canvas for that matter. It should stick and kind of have, uh, Katie's trying to see if she can find one. Um, there's also other applicators that you can use stuff like that for, because uh, you can also use like modeling paste or any of those uh, different kind of gels that would, what you're mostly looking for is when it dries, it doesn't contract. Because a lot of mediums, tend to do that. Same thing with acrylics. They all kind of contract and get tighter. Uh, you want um, something that doesn't do that. So like modeling paste is really good for that. Um, I don't think we have that. Do we not have? Yeah, it's hard to 
We do have those applicators though, which would, would be these, really nice. These work? The no, the other one that would actually work really well. This these work too. Yeah. So this is um, just an old one, but we is have that them. it's a mask pen? It's got the little. Needle oh on it. yeah. This That's is the masky one. pen. Um, so you guys took all the stuff out of this, or you used it all, and then you just refilled this. No, they come empty. You can buy them empty. <gasps> they so. do come empty, don't mm -hmm. they? All the oop, and I'm dropping it. Cut it. it. Um, yeah, so these come actually empty, and this will give you a finer point than this one will. Um, but if I, I believe this is actually quite dirty. Um, yeah, you guys, somebody this, left it open and dried out. Yep, opened and dried out. So that is a one of the one of the applicator nibs that you can use, and it's just got the tiniest little hole, and that way you can kind of almost draw with your your mediums or. Uh, whatever you put in here that kind of doesn't contract like that. Same thing with this. Uh, and this one I really like because this is similar to the um, that leading paste that I was talking about uh, where this is uh, completely open. I mean, there's a little bit of plastic here, so it it isn't open when you first get it. So you have to chop this off. And if you chop it really close to that, you get a really fine circle and that will give you a really fine line. But if you chop it off, lower you'll get a thicker line so you can kind of control it that way yes like an embossing needle would definitely work to score your paper but the embossing kind of technique where you do it on the back side would only work for paper it wouldn't work for canvas um, this stuff where if you put like modeling paste in here it should work for paper but you might have some issues with flexibility depending on how thick you get. So if your paper flexes, it might try to pop off of there. Whereas like this would really hold on to canvas. Uh, it would just be something that you'd probably need to test out. But I would say there's, those are probably the best two options that I could give you. I'd love to see what you're doing because that sounds really interesting. If you're not part of the Jerry's Live Facebook group, you should be and then please post what you're doing because I would love to see it. <laughs> All right, so let's get, I think this color with a little bit of white. Might be better. Again, I think it might be still a little dark, but that's okay. Because I can always layer on top of acrylics, which is really, really great. One of the reasons why I love it. All right. Pop this down. So I'm really just going to kind of build up different layers of these purples and reds just to kind of build up that um, illusion that there are different kind of textures and surfaces in my kind of gooey, we're gonna say this is blueberry. I'm gonna go with blueberry, you know. My gooey blueberry topping on top of my cheesecake. <laughs> Make sure there's no more questions that I've, I hope I haven't missed any. If I did miss a question, let me know. got a lot of highlights everywhere but with this I probably wouldn't want to do like a pure white highlight anywhere except for maybe three spots because otherwise it might get a little busy it's um you always think of highlights as like uh, like a ping uh, if you, if you have a bunch of highlights on any of your paintings, it's your eye tends to go straight there and it just kind of bounces around and it goes ping, 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 ping. So if you have a lot of them, it doesn't really give your eye a chance to rest, which is, like, I don't know, have you guys ever seen um, 
any of those paintings where you're just like, whoo, there's a lot going on there. Yeah, and that's, usually there's a lot of either just random things everywhere with a lot of contrast and highlights, or there's a couple too many highlights, which happens even to me. some over here and right in the middle I really need to start on this actual cheesecake part mm. all right and for the cheesecake I'm gonna keep a little of that lavender in the paint here because I don't want a bright yellowy kind of cheesecake color just yet. I want to build up my layers. And I need to definitely pop that crust over a little bit more. So again, it doesn't really matter if I don't make it perfect. It's the beauty of art it doesn't have to be perfect. It's looking like a mighty gray cheesecake. <laughs> I really, I really should be using um, like a glazing medium to thin down my paints. Did not grab that. kind of extends just a little further. Alright, now I need to warm that up. A little bit of this. Definitely need more white. Definitely want cheesecake now.
add some kind of a shadow down here. Actually, you can probably... Would it be better if... It, you guys let me know. Would it be better if we zoomed in a little bit to the, the actual painting? I feel like that would probably be a little bit more interesting for you guys. Let me know. Probably lose some of my mixing, yeah. Mm -hmm. a little yeah. Yeah, there we go. Now you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, let me uh, pop this over here. It's a little bit better. I have all the bottles over here, which might be messing with my, oh, nope, I'm gonna have a big shadow over everything if I do that. Let's put it over there. There we go. That better for everybody? Hopefully. You might not see all my mixing, but you actually see what I'm painting a little bit better. <laughs> Oop, and I got water on my hand. Like I'm on a delay here. Am I? Yeah. There we go. That's better. really flew by <laughs> it really does it's crazy yeah so if anybody does have any questions feel free to pop them in the chat before uh our time is up here because i'm going to be sitting here painting uh pastries all day so if you have questions about well anything art related really doesn't have to be acrylics doesn't have to be drawing or Anything specific? Or hey, also any ideas on uh, topics that you guys specifically want me to cover for uh, Jerry's Live? Because we were just talking about the schedule, so I have a lot of classes that I need to put together for you guys. <laughs> Although I usually pull um, the Jerry's Live Facebook group as well on what you guys want to see. on my little piece of 
piece of pie here. Oh, let's do a little bit of this blue in here. And is this the right? Because I have all my sample colors over here. I think this is the right one. I'm gonna use this. Actually, that's good timing for the question, Mary Ann just asked you. Am I, I don't think I'm seeing the questions over here. I think I'm on a delay. So do you prefer soft or heavy body acrylic paint? When would you use one versus the other? Ah, that is a good question. Yeah, I'm definitely not seeing your questions over here. I think my, my thing over here is frozen. Maybe I should just exit out and bring it back up. Oh no. But uh, as far as the type of acrylic paint that I like to use, I use a little bit of everything. It kind of depends on what I'm trying to do as far as my finished piece. If I want a very flat um, surface like this with no texture, I love, love, love a nice fluid body paint. So like um, the Lucas Curl Liquid is great for that because uh, it's, it's very fluid and I mean I can thin it down if I need to as well uh, with a little bit of medium but if I'm trying to do something very impasto uh, with a lot of texture I like to use um, an impasto paint or you can also add in a an impasto medium if you have like if you have a liquid paint and you want to bulk it out without having to go out and buy all new paints an impasto medium is a really great way of doing that just because then you don't have to buy so much stuff. You can just buy a medium and then bulk out your paint that way. So, yeah, it looks like I'm not getting any of the questions, so if there are any more, uh, feel free to let me know about them. The what? Oh no. Oh no. Erin said gouache for Jerry's Live. Gouache. She said, maybe comparing types, tips for brushes, tools, how to varnish. Let me see if I can find the episode that we did. Yeah, we did have an episode on gouache, because uh, I, there are so many questions on gouache that come uh, with everybody um, that watched the show. And every time I mention gouache, you're like, what's gouache? How, how why gouache? How, who gouache? All the questions. <laughs> So uh, with gouache, I ended up buying, or not buying, uh, we brought in every single item in our online store that's labeled as gouache. And then I went through every single brand and went through of whether or not it was technically a gouache and kind of what it does and whether or not it rewets. And I did all of that. So that's a really good episode if you're interested in gouache that's a really good one to go check out but i mean re redoing a, a gouache episode is always good and we definitely will in the future um i just might not in the near future just because we did go over that kind of on the recent side i can't remember how recent it, it all kind of blurs together for me <laughs> i don't know how long ago it was but i definitely covered gouache Will definitely not be the last time. No, it won't. Won't be the first, won't be the last. Ian said atmospherics in all media and tying it all together as an image. That's a good one. That's a hard subject to cover though. Um, within an hour. <laughs> I do like that idea though. That's great. I'll have to notate that. All right, now because I am using the edge, I'm gonna actually keep my shadow going off just within the pink. Right, let me get some of this pink back in here just to kind of blend it out a little bit. Yee. Losing a little bit too much of that purple. Remember your shadows get a lot softer the further it goes out. And then it gets real crisp lines. 
kind of real crisp edges. Usually the closer it gets to the object where it's touching to the ground. Yeah, I totally, I have no questions over here. I don't even know why I have that still up. Doesn't help. Whoop, went over my cherry. It's okay, I'll reshape it. Like it never happened. Actually, do need to clean up my edges over here just a little bit. It doesn't look so messy. There we go. There we go. We got a little bit of shadow, and actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna do a little bit of a highlight too, like the light's coming in this direction. So I think I want down here to just be a little bit lighter of this pink that I have mixed up that was the background here. That'd be cute. Give kind of an idea of the light source. So should be using a bigger brush. <laughs> yeah, I am gonna grab a different brush. Here, let me grab my my angle brush. This is a 10 angular. That'll give me a lot more control than that pointed round that I had going on. Just for the background here, specifically. really want to keep going down on the edge there but while this is still wet let me get this kind of blended out side a little bit because that's the cool thing about the edge canvases is that you don't have to frame them there we go a little bit of a light source and I made berries on top of a cheesecake. Yay. There's my cute little painting. One of nine, done. <laughs> and how are we doing on time anyway? It's about almost perfect timing. Oh man, look at that. Like I planned it or something, ha ha. <laughs> well guys, thank you so much for joining me in the open studio hours. That was a lot of fun. I hope you guys get to join me in two weeks. Because remember, we do this every other week. So it won't be next week, but it will be the week after. So if you have any of those random art questions that you've been meaning to ask but have not had the chance to, feel free to jump in to the next one in two weeks. And uh, I'll be here painting and doing all the things that I have to do on a daily basis. And you guys can absolutely ask me anything. So that is Open Studio. Thanks for joining. <laughs> I'm going to keep painting though, because I, I have to do nine more. <sighs> now I want cake. <laughs>